No matter how many students we have sitting before us in a classroom, we have to remember that they're all coming from different backgrounds. And it is these backgrounds that are informing their experiences, their perceptions, their biases, and ultimately their coping mechanisms. So as teachers, it's contingent upon us to differentiate our lessons. And you might think, well, why am I doing this? And that sounds like a lot of work. And in the beginning, it will be, because it's challenging you to view your lessons in a whole new way. But happily, the learning outcomes will be the same. The purpose of this video is threefold. First, we'll define what differentiated instruction, or DI, is. And then next, we'll explain how we can incorporate it across all different subject areas. Finally, the video will end with a couple of teacher hacks. What is differentiated instruction? Well, when you hear the word, or the first word anyway, you hear the word different, and that's basically 90% of it. You are changing your lessons in order to offer alternatives or choice to your students. And again, why are we doing this? Well, essentially students are different in the ways that they learn. So if kids are better hearing your instruction, they're auditory learners. If you have those who prefer a poster or some kind of sign or anchor chart, they are your visual learners. And the kids who have to get down right into it, deep and dirty, they are the kinesthetic learners. Ultimately, if you're able to reach these students and get them engaged, they'll be more enthusiastic, they'll respond better, and they will produce much more effectively. DI is an amazing strategy which really can be applicable in a spelling lesson, science class, or during math. Let me give two examples. First of all, with literacy. As a primary school teacher, I know that kids weekly have to receive spelling lists, and for them, it's a bit of a chore and a bore. Okay, they don't like having their parents recite the words to them. They certainly don't want to write the words over and over again. So I came up with some strategies that seem to be helping. I suggest that the kids start spelling words backwards to really trick their brain. For the kinesthetic learners, toss a small object in the air, and as you're tossing it and catching it, you're repeating the letters out loud. So that kind of engages the kids who need to be busy or fidgety. Even singing the words out and giving it a familiar chant kind of mixes things up and provides some diversity. For the older students, you can use a jam board, they can collaborate, put their ideas down. Even something as simple as a journal response can be elevated by doing a screencast instead, a podcast, or just an audio file. Now in math class, we're always looking to have students show us the problem solving process. Show us your thinking, show us your work. What are you thinking of? I need to see it. So Chrome extensions such as Equatio or other apps that are supported by your board will be useful in introducing children not just to the technology piece, but also allowing them to show their learning in different and innovative ways. First, I recommend that you invest time and get to know your students. This is key. If you know that Susie loves the author Gordon Corman and that Billy is a dedicated and avid YouTuber, that's half the battle won. Knowing where their interests are will allow you to tap in and provide alternatives and choices that will speak to those interests. Secondly, be clear with your expectations. If you articulate exactly what you are expecting from the kids, they won't have any questions. Provide a poster board or post a message virtually on Google Classroom so everyone can go back and access. Have the rubrics displayed prominently. Have co-created success criteria. It's a win. Thirdly, do not be so hard on yourself. Okay, take your time with it, especially if it's the first time uh, where you're integrating DI principles. So taking something very simple, a written activity, and then offering one choice at first is fine. And that choice could be draw a picture instead. It could be make a Google drawing. Um, you'll be surprised actually when you offer a choice, you may have the kids who are listening offer other versions because again, it speaks to their skill set. So again, if you rely on students to kind of help you out together, you're working collaboratively, that leads naturally to developing wonderful success criteria that they will remember because now it's meaningful along with rubrics. In the end, you're gonna wind up with student results that are strong, innovative, creative, and entertaining for you too. Thanks.